Hello and welcome by EA's Art Channel. My name is Ilkin Wiersma and today I'd like to share this big painting that I did with the uh, watercolors. And um, it's uh, my first one, my first uh, complete artwork that I did. Uh, finished with these uh, Faber Castell, uh, all, I have to look at it, uh, Albrecht Dürer, Dürer watercolor pencils. Um, I don't pronounce it uh, very uh, right, I think, but. Uh, you know uh, now which one I am using. I have the full set of the 120 uh, pencils, which is great, uh, if you ask me, because there are, are a lot of nice colors in this uh, set. And I think, uh, I, I found that they work very well and the colors are showing up very beautifully on your uh, artwork. So uh, first I draw in with the pencils my lines and uh, different areas and then I use water to uh, let that color show up a bit more. Therefore, I like to use also these uh, aqua brushes. I have a, uh, I have five of them. I think I have a few more in different sizes with uh, uh, very nice points are, uh, on them, and also a little um, other sizes. I have to look it up. This is a little bit finer. But uh, yeah, you get the idea. So for uh, different areas, if I do little details, for example, in the eyes, I use that uh, with a fine point and with a bit bigger point for the bigger areas. And also, you will see me using uh, different brushes. I just have one brush here, but I um, basically my uh, acrylic brushes, I like to use um, just, I dab them in a bit of water. Sometimes I dab it on a... Um, little of uh, uh, clean uh, tissue to dry it up a bit and uh, just use a um, not a completely wet brush but just a damp brush damp brush and um, then I'm slowly going over my details and especially for the fur I will talk about it uh, more obviously in this tutorial but uh, I like to leave those lines that I made with my uh, pencils because that will give the indication of uh, the fur I, he has a uh, well, quite, quite a lot of hairs on his face, so I want to give that indication, and that is how I do it. I apply it with my pencil, then a, a damp brush, and then I'm going over that to uh, smudge out the colors, but leave those details underneath there. So that was a big um, thing for me personally that I found when uh, while I was working on this, because I found it very hard to make fur, but this is a way uh, I think you can do it. And um, also, I'm going to start with... Um, a sort of same uh, 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 drawing of this uh, pig, but uh, it, the first one didn't go as well as I uh, hoped it will uh, or would go. But I like to share it because um, I hope it will give you uh, some uh, encouragement to uh, start uh, doing new stuff, even though you are not happy with the end results. You can learn still a, a lot of things. You are, uh, uh, yeah, art. Um, uh, works you are not that happy with but you can uh, use them and uh, like I said I'm going to show you the first one which I uh, not finished I started this one this one I'd, I'm completely happy with this one but yeah I will talk about uh, why I stopped painting at uh, the first one so that is uh, first in this tutorial and then I'm going to uh, this real uh, no, not real <laughs> to this artwork and uh, the completed uh, section of this um, drawing uh, painting I made so uh, therefore, let's start the tutorial and I'm going to talk all about all the materials. Like I said in the intro, I uh, redid this uh, painting. This is the first uh, uh, attempt uh, that I did of this uh, pig uh, painting. But um, yeah, it didn't uh, went as well as I hoped because of the, uh, of the paper. I uh, started with uh, some details on the eyes and then, uh, as you can see, I am uh, uh, started with the ears. And normally I am used to that the paper is a, a bit wrapping because of the the water that you use with a uh, watercolor but normally it straightened out when it's drying but this paper it stayed like it shows up now and uh, it was really really horrible because I like to have a nice straight finish and um, but it did wasn't uh, doable with this paper even though like I said it was watercolor paper and I will have a uh, I hope I can find it again because it was some older uh, bats that I get uh, that I did get from a uh, friend but uh, this paper wouldn't work for me at all I'm uh, yeah it's just it uh, <laughs> looked like I'm uh, did using uh, normally printer paper or something like that some cheap paper but yeah it didn't work at all 
So I started over and here you see me working on the uh, Clairefontaine pastel matte paper. I'm just laying in a bit uh, of color for um, any background so I'm not uh, painting on um, on a white or completely white it's just uh, a little bit of color i like to uh, add uh, to my paper so it's not straight white and um yeah i uh, this paper you can see it works um, way way better even though it uh, is not uh, normally used for uh or made for a watercolor paper i see use uh, some other artists as well as well this paper because um, I think of the layering and this paper is uh, like I said for meant for pastel so it takes a lot of uh, pigment of the um, of the pencils which is uh, kind of great because you can uh, as you can see it uh, really shows up uh, very very well but the only um, thing uh, that I didn't like for this paper is that it um, you can't you cannot stay uh, in, uh, in between your lines. So for example for the ears you see uh, saw me uh, using a bit of um, water around the ears because it the paper takes the uh, paint over your lines. It, it, because of the roughness of the paper, of the thickness of the paper, it will, um, yeah you cannot control it completely where to stop and to start your lines uh, as soon as you are applying the water. So therefore that is a little bit um, difficult to uh, to manage but it is doable but yeah i think I, the, the next time i'm really going to sh uh, look up uh, some uh, really uh, nice acrylic um, uh, i'm sorry uh, watercolor papers because i want to use uh, some different papers because yeah this was much better than uh, the one i started with but not uh, as nice as i uh, i wanted to to have so therefore i uh, the next time i will use a, another paper and I know there are, are uh, gra some great papers on the market, so I have to look into that and uh, buy some other papers. But yeah, this is the uh, big painting that I did, and I'm using quite a lot of colors. Uh, more colors than in my reference photo, for, uh, um, especially the purples. I really like the purples. It gives uh, a much a richer feeling to your uh, paintings and also to your drawings, if you ask me. So therefore, I like to apply a lot of color. And the nice thing of, uh, like I said, for this uh, paper is that it takes a lot of pigment of the uh, pencils so therefore when I'm applying the water I you it will show up very well that is nice but it can uh, sometimes be a little bit tricky so therefore I uh, keep that in mind if you will try to uh, oh, if you are going to try the uh, pastel matte paper it may uh, be a bit richer than uh, you may like especially for the highlights when I'm uh, here I'm using a darker color and on the top of his head I uh, want to have a highlight so I have to be very careful with um, applying the water there. So um, what I did was a uh, using a damp brush, not a completely wet brush but a damp brush and I'm slowly taking the pigment uh, uh, with me in areas that I, um, yeah I'm slowly building up where I want it to be lighter. And here once again I'm trying to use as quite as many colors because it shows up very very well. It gives you a, a way more depth in your painting if you ask me and also it, uh, the colors are um, helping each other to stand out more. So therefore uh, I try to practice a lot of with different colors and color combinations and I really like browns and purples uh, with one another. So therefore I uh, used uh, for this uh, pig painting also a lot of purples. And like I said in the intro, I try to leave my brush strokes. Those are the indication of the fur. He had quite some some hairs on his face, so therefore I want to, uh, of course, have the of give the indication that there are a lot of um, uh, fur, a lot of hairs on his uh, face. But with the uh, watercolor, it can be um, hard, if you ask me, because yeah. If, I don't do this uh, as much, so I have to uh, learn a lot, but um, yeah, I thought it would be nice to try to lay in that hair with my pencils and then uh, go over that with a damp brush, so I can get that effect with uh, when applying a water to your watercolor uh, pencils, but I still need the texture of the fur. So that is how I do that, and it worked very well for me, I, uh, I kept that indication of fur. But once again, I try to uh, apply a lot of different colors. It will give you a uh, much more rich, uh, rich colors. 
and you can see the difference here where I applied a few colors and way more colors it uh, yeah it shows up very well and what is also very very important if if you do uh, something with fur like uh, on this head is uh, to follow the direction of the fur it will uh, give the indications of different shapes uh, around the head for uh, for this uh, painting and that is uh, and bone structures so that is very very important to uh, follow uh, that uh, uh, very well as as shows up in your reference of course and also uh, the uh, length of every um, hair or um, yeah, uh, every hair in different directions have different lengths. So you keep that in mind and watch closely your reference photo because that will make all the difference. I try to uh, copy that as close as I can. I'm not counting every hair I see, but I uh, try to give the indication of a, a lot of hair, a lot of fur, and like I said, with uh, different uh, shapes and different uh, lengths. And this was really fun. I uh, was really glad that I found uh, a way to uh, let that hair stand out, to let that uh, pencil strokes show up. So therefore, once again, uh, use a damp brush and you have a bit of control with your pigment, but you will not lose your details. And really focusing on the lights and the dark. So therefore I came back for the ears uh, to darken them up and it will uh, give you a, a much more realistic look. And um, for, Especially with watercolors, I found it sometimes very hard to get it very dark, but this paper takes a lot of pigment, so therefore when I'm using the black pencil, it shows up very well. And most of the times I'm combining my black pencil with uh, purple or blue. It makes it uh, even richer, that the black. And um, that is very, very nice to get in those really, really deep, deep blacks. And once again, you can see here that I have a lot of different colors there. I'm blending them in. I'm slowly building up and I'm not trying to uh, go too quickly. And when it's uh, wet, sometimes I uh, stop painting, but sometimes even if the paper is wet, I'm going um, over with it uh, with more pencils, but very gently, gently, because I don't want to uh, damage my paper. So I uh, barely let the pencil touch the paper but some pigment will come off and it uh, shows up even darker than the other way around when I would uh, first apply it with the pencil and then later on come over it with a uh, wet brush. Sometimes it gives you a, a very nice effect when doing it uh, a little bit uh, different and um, like I said, uh, wetting the paper first and then come back with a pencil gives you also a really rich, nice effect. For the glow I really like that light blue, it gives just a hint of uh, blue on those um, areas around uh, his eyes and his nose, it gives a uh, really nice shiny effect. That is really a color I uh, yeah, quite used a lot for, especially like I said for the shiny areas. It, uh, it stands out really well with the orange uh, color. And he, has, he had a, a lot of mud on his nose, so therefore I just make that texture a round motion for the most of the times with my pencil, then came over it with uh, a uh, water brush or with the other brush, I uh, switched between the both. But um, yeah, and then I applied again a browns and blacks to get uh, that, um, that mud effect on his nose. And uh, yeah, I'm not copying every every shape uh, exactly, but just want to give the indication of that uh, that not uh, um, give the indication of the different shapes there. And you see me again. And now I used a uh, the straight paint, acrylic paint with uh, I'm sorry, uh, watercolor paint uh, with uh, a bit of blue and applied it with my brush. So that is why you see me doing here, just to give it a little bit more of those highlights. And I found that it was a, a bit easier with a brush. And I have those um, watercolor uh, paints also. So therefore I uh, used it, uh, most of them uh, only uh, for the highlights. The rest uh, I did with my, my pencils.
and most of the times I'm in this stage I'm not watching my references as closely anymore I'm just trying to make everything work with one another and uh, try to apply a little bit more color a little bit more details that I like for my uh, painting in this case so therefore I uh, don't watch that reference as close as um, I did in the beginning because I have most details in and I'm just hyping up some contrast this is the photo of the uh, original artwork and uh, most of the times the colors aren't showing up as uh, bright as in my uh, as, as uh, at these photos because of the daylight lamps and I keep saying it uh, once in a while because I really found it uh, very annoying personally but yeah this is the best I can do I ha I need those lamps in my studio but yeah they uh, they don't make those colors appear as bright as they are but uh, yeah this will uh, give you a nice indication I think and uh, yeah, I hope you liked it. It was a really fun project to work with, and I hope to do a little, a lot more in the future with these acrylic. Um, I'm sorry, I keep saying acrylic, but <laughs> watercolor pencils. So, and here she is, all framed up. And uh, if you ask me, I think that uh, a good frame or a good color, and I, most of the times I really like black because it will uh, let the painting as uh, our drawing stand out uh, much more so uh, therefore i like to use this uh, kind of cheap uh, frames and um but yeah i like to uh, frame uh, basically all of my work and uh, i try to hang it in my house if i don't have room i will uh yeah storage it uh, framed and not in uh, boxes because i like to have it a little bit more uh, protection than in boxes and boxes and uh having uh, not uh paintings uh, or drawings uh, on top of each other because that can leave some marks if you don't do it right and um, I don't have that storage space here that much so I definitely like to frame it and those frames can uh, can you uh, put a, uh, up one another and it will protect the drawing or the painting much more if you uh, ask me so therefore I like to do it uh, that way and um, yeah like I said I think that frames can really help your artwork to let it pop out more to let it stand out more and uh, yeah, I really like it. I like uh, that it brings up the uh, brightness of the colors much more than uh, as you saw at the beginning of this uh, tutorial uh, when I had it framed or uh, taped to a uh, wooden panel. That's nice to work on, but this is uh, much, much nicer, of course. So uh, therefore, uh, if you have the ability, I suggest you using frames for your artwork because it uh, complements your artwork much more. So uh, yeah, this was uh, kind of fun because uh, like I said, this was my first uh, serious attempt at uh, the with the watercolor pencils. I think I have quite a lot to learn, but uh, that is nice of course because I like learning and I think it uh, will help me in uh, even with other mediums to use uh, different techniques and maybe um, you will approach uh, it differently with uh, the watercolors but uh, yeah you can uh, come to uh, uh, across a new technique or a new uh, way of painting that may uh, give you the motivation or the inspiration to do other things uh, otherwise with other mediums if that makes sense so uh, therefore i like to use uh, different art materials and i think it's uh, it will keep you more interesting in making art at least for me because um, I cannot stress that out enough because I'm talking for uh, about my experience. You may have a really other experiences, also fine of course, but this is how I like to do it. So and if you like, please be welcome at my Facebook page, my Instagram and on my own website. You can uh, find a lot of more information about my artwork there. And um, if you like, you can also subscribe of course to my channel, I would really like that. And for the, those who are just subscribed to my channel, thank you very very much, I really appreciate it. And yeah, for now, this is it. I hope to see you at one of my next tutorials. Bye-bye.